Coming up on today's show, we're going to talk some news and what are some things that are still a decent value at Walt Disney World. That's coming up today on Traveling with the Mouse. Welcome everybody to episode 472 of Traveling with the Mouse. It's Halloween. My name is Indiana Jones. I mean, my name is Adam, and I am your host this week. And I am joined by John. I forgot to. Are you supposed to be Henry Jones Sr.? Because I guess well, you could I mean, be. You are Henry Jones Jr., so I figured I would be Henry Jones Sr. You kind of could be. I forgot All you to. needs to have. You didn't get the memo to wear a costume. Well, it's a good thing this is an audio podcast. I guess so. You don't know what I'm wearing. But I'm looking at you, and I can tell you're not in costume. Although I will be busting out the Jack Sparrow costume. Yeah. Because at work, they decided to do a pirate theme, so I have to be Jack. Oh. Of course, since I already have Jack. We named the monkey Jack. Yeah, I'm going to dress up as a monkey. Yeah. This monkey. You're welcome. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> so you're going to be in character all day? Uh, There's a possibility. There's something about when I put that on that I'm going to that happened to me, actually. I got the... Speaking very jackish. I got a Jack Sparrow costume for a party like that, and I you can't help but be in character. <laughs> you can't help but just embody and I may Jack run, Sparrow. I may run across the lobby. <laughs> yes. You can't help it. And say, Captain Barbosa, this crew of miscreants, sailor of the desert Il de Muerta, yeah, yeah. Yes. You say it all the time. Il de Muerta. Don't you just like hearing Il de Muerta? Yes. It flows off the tongue. Um, but what are we doing for Halloween? Anything besides dressing up for work? You're talking about me personally? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you got to take the kids trick-or-treating in the neighborhood. That's usually all we do. Yeah. Halloween is Thursday, right? On a Thursday? Mm -hmm. It's on a Thursday, the 31st. This year it's on the 31st. Mm, I'm trying to think. I don't think there's anything in particular. Silly treats. Yeah. There's not really much time to do anything if you, uh, you know, because, you know, usually it's after a work day unless it falls on like a Saturday or a Sunday. Yeah. The last several years it's been during the week, so it's not really uh, been easy. Yes. Trying to make a segue into the uh, bake shop, but. Didn't have one. The cake bake shop at the boardwalk is finally yeah. open. Formerly the like, uh, ESPN club thing. But everybody sort of I've seen has say, said this. It looks like it belongs at the Grand Floridian, which it really does look like it's themed to the Grand Floridian. Very uh, upscale looking. Isn't everything Classy. like white on, white on the inside these days? The poly. Uh, yeah. Tower uh, is like right. m- mainly white, right? Yeah, it's very uh, demure, um, so they say. But twenty five dollars for a slice of cake is a little uh, beyond. Uh, How big is the cake? I saw a piece like it's. You could probably have two people share it. It's a it's a decent size, like three layer piece or something but you know all I can say is even if it's a good size for 25 bucks that better be the best cake I've ever put in my mouth <laughs> right I mean it's twelve fifty per person if you want to split it with somebody essentially right so it's not really I don't know although it Gideon's although Gideon's fancy. was a little expensive for a cookie but it is a good size it was a but six dollars for a cookie yeah, yeah which is not terrible but I mean it's still it's but it's actually it, I know for a fact it's good yeah, so they also, the cake shop side, where you can just go buy, you know, baked goods or slice of $25 cake, has merch as well, which I'm like, I, I think, isn't this a chain? Is this a chain? I'm wondering. Yes, I would think it's got to be, doesn't it? I mean. So they have their own merch, which doesn't look that great, but yeah, I'm sure. Who, yeah, who would want that? Do they have their own characters there? I see some uh, stuffed dolls. 
Yeah. I don't know what these are. I'm sure there's a story behind it that I'm not look yeah. I haven't looked up. But the cake bake shop. Yeah, it's interesting, but I I find the you know the prices are a little much. Didn't you say uh who was saying that the a uh, Coke is seven dollars or something? No, I saw that there was a uh it was actually on uh, Blog Mickey. He had right. a uh, article about a seven dollar Coke. He had a, an entire review, apparently, as well, but I can't seem to find it now. So it is a little crazy to get a slice of cake for. Looks like some of them are twenty two ninety nine, for sure, and then some of them are twenty four ninety nine. The chocolate chip cookie is six ninety nine, so they <laughs> so they have Gideon's about price beat. Gideon's right. I was looking at the homemade ice cream is six ninety nine for a scoop. Two scoops is nine ninety nine. A hot really? chocolate is nine ninety nine. A unicorn hot chocolate is eleven ninety nine. Let's see, an iced tea is eight ninety nine. A lemonade is eight ninety nine. Good night. Assorted fountain drinks six ninety nine. Smart water is six ninety nine. So that seven dollar Coke. Uh, yeah, I was just looking at some of the comments on the tweet. Right. Someone said, "Just get one hundred and forty seven free refills, and you've come out ahead on the entire meal. Beat them at their own game." Yeah. <laughs> do they do free refills? I don't know. Apparently. Do they? Hmm. Is it really free if you initially paid seven dollars though? I mean <laughs> Yeah. A cappuccino is eight dollars. A cup of like hot tea is eight dollars. Seven ninety nine. So yes, this place is very opulent and uh, it kinda goes in line with all the recent news from Disney lately of price increases and special elite services like the Premier Pass we talked about. They're kind of going crazy with the uh, price news lately. Uh, yeah, as a, in, in contrast, they're, they're announcing all these price increases. They really, the perception really, I mean, they're, they're doing this and it actually makes them look pretty bad overall. All these yeah. things that cost more and then on the flip side, their competitor that's not their competitor according to them is releasing their news about about a brand new park, the first yeah. in like 20 years, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. To either uh, of the... Uh, World or... Or into yeah, the or Orlando Universal. area, I guess. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, well, if you count like Legoland or something, it doesn't. But I'm talking about between the two big boys. Yeah. The first one to do a new theme park mm-hmm. in over 20 years. Yeah. Because Animal Kingdom was the last. Well, no, Animal Kingdom wasn't the last. Islands of Adventure. Islands of Adventure was the last. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So between them, it's the first time since Islands of Adventure, which is interesting. I just thought about that. The last two new theme parks between these two is both universal. But anyway. Uh, interesting. Yeah. I didn't think of it that way. Not only that, they announced like their... Um, premier hotel for the new park Helios now of course this does not include their unlimited express like they have with some of the other ones before but Mm -hmm. they're doing a starting price at sub $300 for a flagship type hotel that's actually in the theme park yeah so which is what the price should probably be (laughs) yeah I mean I guess your what's your closest comparison Disney wise the Californian and we know it's not three hundred dollars a night, so as mm-hmm. far as having one that walks right into the park, right? You know, yeah. So, I mean, you could say Boardwalk or Beach Club or Yacht Club would be similar to that in terms of. Well, either way, you're still not getting that one for two ninety eight or whatever it was two ninety five. If you're lucky, you might could get the Dolphin for two ninety eight, but. I think the cheapest of the I Disney hotels that I've seen is probably either going to be like Animal Kingdom, Old Key West, yeah. Saratoga. Right. And the lowest you see nowadays is like 460 maybe of, of rack rate type stuff. Right. Now you might get a discount on top of that sometime. Yeah, with discounts or renting points or something like that, you might get sub 400, but... 
you're going to pay at least four at least four hundred cl- upwards to five hundred dollars a night. Yeah, it's yeah. harder and harder to find the sub four hundred anything. And then with that five hundred dollars a night, you get the privilege of buying an extra pass on top of that, which only gets you one ride on each yeah. ride. One <laughs> ride on each ride. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying. Where if you yeah. go in comparison, something like, let's just say the over on the Universal side, something like, um, gosh, uh, what's the um, Royal Pacific, I think it is, right? It's probably the cheapest of their mm-hmm. three exclusive ones that have Express Pass included. Yeah. It's something like 5.30 a night, something like that. Hmm. So, and that includes that unlimited express. <laughs> That's the thing. For only about seventy to a hundred bucks more, we'll say, per night ver- you than what you're getting at Disney, pass. or you get that included, and you get to ride it more than one time. Yeah, I mean, just saying. Now I know the two parks are not the same thing. Mm-hmm. Apples and oranges there, but. You could say that, but I feel, I mean, I feel like with the stuff that we're seeing now, I mean, it's the perception and perception is reality, right? Is that Disney, uh, the perception is they're separating people by class. Yeah. Going back to the bake shop, the cake bake place. Sorry. I mean, we got off on prices. <laughs> well, I mean, it's kind of in the same vein. Is, is this really a demand for this place type of place at the boardwalk in particular? Probably not, and I, I I I would wager to say that even with it just now opening, I mean, do we have any do we have any numbers on what it was like when it first opened? Were there I people mean, lined up or anything? I'm sure I mean, that it will do well in the beginning, just because people want to post social media that oh, I got this seven dollar coke or I well, got that's this. a few that's a handful of influencers. It's not the same thing. I was looking also at their the cocktail menu. Everything is about twenty bucks cocktail a mimosa is $19 that's the cheapest this is just eighteen ninety nine, $19 yeah so it's like and you can get a glass of Dom Perignon for $120 good lord the bottle is $460 I have no desire to go to this place I prefer the 53 myself Sorry, go ahead. I already have no desire to go to this place from the get-go because it doesn't really appeal to me. But when you throw the prices in there, that's a definite no. I mean, yeah, I mean, so the restaurant side of it, the prices aren't as bad as I would have thought, like lunch and dinner. Well, and supposedly they adjusted this like they lowered it. Yeah, right? there's some, they lowered some of the prices, you know, for the... And increased some others. So like breakfast, they have a kid's breakfast is twelve ninety nine for bacon and eggs. I don't know if that's all the bacon and eggs you have, or if it's just two pieces. <laughs> but twelve ninety nine. Is that the Ron Swanson special? <laughs> yeah, uh, doesn't seem that way. But <laughs> like our French toast breakfast is like nineteen dollars, so it's not like as outrageous as you would have thought. The lunch and dinner menu is there's a choose two for twenty seven dollars. The most expensive thing I see is crab cakes for forty nine ninety nine. So like, yeah, I, I just can't. Yeah, but it, you know they don't have like, it's I don't know. You would think that the, so it's more like cafe type entrees though. They're not like yeah. Um, it's like so their burger, for example, is twenty seven dollars. Classic burger with fries. Is twenty six ninety nine. Wow. Plant based burgers twenty eight ninety nine. You can get a salmon fillet for forty bucks. So yeah, it's wow. a little much. The kids menu, a grilled cheese is thirteen ninety nine. So I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna go in and yeah. order from the kids menu. Yeah, mom's been ordering from the kids menu at Disney for years. Yeah, I'm sure they don't <laughs> say too much about it, right? Do they no, they it? don't. They don't even ask who it's for. They don't ask you to see if you're. It's all just for you. I mean, come on. Well, Especially, so this sort of is a good segue into the what I did want to talk about more of, which is there are still some things that are good values at Disney. And I'm afraid to talk too much about them because then they'll be anymore. Away, but 
But there are still some things that are surprisingly like really good value. We'll get into more of that, but I do wonder how long this place will stay around because the prices are just insane. And it's like, is there really a demand for cake at Disney that much to where other than the social media? I find, I find it hard to believe this is a, this is almost as, this is going to be almost as bad as the NBA experience. Yeah, that's I mean, what does, I wonder. Does, does Iger have a thing for cake as well? Maybe. I just don't understand, like, when I'm on vacation, cake is not really the thing I'm thinking about unless I'm, you know, even if you're celebrating a birthday, a $25 slice of cake? Like, not really? I don't know. Disney still offers for 40 bucks the celebration cake, which will feed four or five people. But even still, we always had leftovers whenever you ordered that thing because nobody would eat the whole thing. Right. And it's like you, you waste it because you're on vacation. Like, I'm going to take it back to my room and stick it in my fridge and eat it tomorrow? No. Like, I'm not going to do that. Right. You'll, for you know, you're not going to do it. So, yeah, I don't, I don't understand the demand for this. I don't think there's very high demand. So, but... It looks nice. They did a great job with the decor, but anyway. Yeah, I was thinking you mentioned uh, the best value is on things. Yeah. I know good well I've seen this for food, especially on uh, DFB. Mm -hmm. I just don't know if they've done one this year. Right. Maybe a video they did, but I just don't remember what it was. Yeah, there's certain things that are ridiculously priced at Disney because they're popular. And then there's others that are like, yeah, it's not that bad. You know, the popcorn, I, I, we used to talk about it all the time, you know, get a popcorn bucket or we bring our buckets from years ago at this point uh-huh. and refill them for $2.20. Years ago. Yeah. Like those Skyliner buckets my son brings every time. Those are a couple of years old, so some of them are. The Guardians ones from last year, but they refill them, no questions asked, for 2 dollars and. 25 cents so you buy the bucket once for 20 bucks or 30 bucks depending on how fancy it is well once upon a time you could uh take a mug uh, the resort mugs for oh, years and years <laughs> yes they did <laughs> put a stop to that i don't know how is that a good value because whether they're like 18 dollars now for the mug and you can refill it that it, much stay i think so Sixteen ninety nine or seventeen ninety nine, something like that. All I can say is I don't, they weren't that much back in the day, but no, they definitely weren't. And but, you get way better. You had a way better value out of that. You basically, you know, it was a steal, literally, right? Which is why they obviously <laughs> changed it. And then they started putting RFID chips in there so they can control. <laughs> right, you can't get anything from the soda machine unless you have uh, clearance. Yes, unless you have clearance. Basically, yeah. Even the paper cups have a chip on them. This is hilarious to me. Yes, yeah, so we have yeah. a video uh, that's kind of a it's 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 become somewhat of an inside joke with us though. But I was videoing early morning at Polynesian, and uh, my parents had uh, already been into Captain Cook's coming out, and my dad makes the comment. He says, "I have my stolen coffee." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Ninety <laughs> seven. No, no, no. That was uh, like 05. That was like the last time. Oh, that was late. Oh, so so even yeah. in 05, you could have. Oh, yeah. You still had it. So when they do the RFID chips, it was probably like 20, 2009, 10, oh, somewhere shoot. there probably. No, I don't even think they had them then. You probably could have got away with it then. It, it was, it was, it was probably, it was probably More around modern. the same time they did Fast Pass uh, Plus. Probably I around remember that in, time. Yeah, I remember in 2014, we had to buy them and they. Yeah, it was only worked your length of stay or whatever. Yeah. So I know by 2014 it wasn't. Well, I know I like to say at Great Wolf, they have these cups that like you have like a set number of refills you can get out of it. I see. So they, they or I think the last time I ate at Captain Cook's and got a just a regular cup, right? Yeah. Like you had a time on it. Like it says you have refills up until like you had, you had like a two hour time limit or whatever. Yeah. You get as much as you wanted in those two hours, but after the two hours, I couldn't use it anymore. So you bring like a five-gallon 
jug or something and just refill, pour it in, refill, pour it in. I don't know. I guess you could. I mean, if, if, so if you don't get caught, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Bring a giant cooler or something. But I was talking about the popcorn. I think that's a good, that's one of the things. I think Disney's quick service restaurants, a lot of the prices are not that bad. Some of them are better value than others because of what you get. Right. As long as you get a decent amount of food and good quality food, the prices are basically on par with most fast casual restaurants these days, like your Chipotle's and, you know, certain other types like that. I don't know about that. They were for a little while there. You know, they just went up on prices, by the way, with food as well. Mm, okay. Usually, though, they don't go that much. I don't know. I still think the most of the quick services are decent. Character dining went up by like five bucks. And of course, you know, per this person. I mean, Garden Grill went up. Yeah, I didn't actually see the. I mean, it was different places did it there, but I was just saying on average it was about five bucks more for each category, which in their case, kids are really not that much less than the adults. And on top of that, they consider anybody that's over 10 uh, an adult. So, right. Well, yeah, of course. I just want to look at, so like Cosmic Rays, the burgers, you get the burger and fries for thirteen ninety nine, or some of them are thirteen nineteen, thirteen twenty nine, and then, you know, the chicken tenders, and fries is ten ninety nine. They're not horribly priced, I don't think. Well, that's got to give you an example of some of your best bang for your for your buck. Okay, if we're talking about like quick service type places, like you were saying, right? Mm-hmm. So if you go to say Sleepy Hollow, yeah, if you get one of the waffles, this like the Nutella type waffle. The Mickey waffle with the chocolate hazelnut spread, bananas, berries, and whipped cream is $9.49. And it's actually big enough that you could probably feed two people off of. Yeah. If you wanted to. But it's a good size for what you get. Right. I would argue that the something like the corn dog nuggets at Casey's yeah. is a good, a good value for what you get. They say, you know, the cinnamon roll at, at Gaston's is $6.99 right. now. Yeah, which it's still big, so those kind of things are decent value. I I even think the Dole Whip is not a terrible value because you can get the cup. It's five ninety nine. I was trying to find the corn dog nuggets. I guess it's the mini corn dogs is what they call them now. Yeah, ten dollars ninety nine cents. Ten ninety nine. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was just saying the you know, the Dole Whip. Anyway, continue. The Dole Whip that you eat with a spoon, just the soft serve, five ninety nine. Yes, anywhere else that's ridiculous, but but at Disney, you know, five ninety nine. You know, my kids can share that. It'll melt before they eat it. So, right. The vanilla soft serve at the Alo- uh, not Aloha Al Sunshine Tree is like five seventy nine. So again, they're not like it's not the best prices in the world, but. I don't think it's terrible for you, kid. Uh, here's a good one as far as, like, size. This is over at Animal Kingdom. Yeah. Uh, at Flame Tree, the French fries with the pulled pork and cheese. It's only $8.49, and it is a lot of food. Yeah. Yeah, so there's definitely good examples still. And as we've we've talked about many times, Baseline Tap House, I think, is still, for beer anyway, the best value you're going to get of a 20, is it 22 ounces? Keep saying, keep saying it, Adam. I know, because they do creep, the price does creep up every, so it's like, I've, I'm afraid to say it, but it's a whole lot better value than going to, say, Oga's or, you know, any of the well, other. Well, here's something that, they're not exactly the biggest thing in the world, but I mean, uh, the pineapple cream cheese spring roll, they're only $3.79 over at uh, Pangu Pangu. Yeah. So it's now twelve twenty five for a 20 ounce draft at baseline tap house but when you think about the 16 ounce is 11.50 so for 75 cents more you get four more ounces it's definitely worth the 75 extra cents 
So what's the name? Of, what's the name of the place that does the cheeseburger spring rolls? What's the name of the cart? The Adventureland Spring Roll Cart or something like that. Is that what it's called? Is that all it's called? I think so. That is not worth it, by the way. It's not. Well, I mean, a lot of people think of it as good. So spring roll snack cart is what it's called. It's just called spring roll snack cart. Okay. Yeah, but I believe it's nine ninety nine now for two spring rolls, and they're t- they're not big. It's not worth. It's not worth it. Oh well, then how about this? If you get the cheeseburger pods, the kids meal, that would be a good value, right? Yeah, and I was gonna. We you mentioned earlier about your mom getting the uh, kids meals. When you mobile order, you can order like four kids meals and uh, just go pick up well, the I mobile mean, order. You know, you could really do it anywhere, but yeah. But it's also you don't have to mobile order. Mobile order is just less obvious, I guess. Right, but I'm just saying you have the option to mobile order. Why not? Like, you can order whatever, and I don't know. We do that all the time, where we'll piece together stuff rather than ordering adult meals or anything you can just pick and choose different things if you're not wanting a full meal you know yeah you can you can if you look at it you can find things like that you can do to to help save money on all of those heck if i wanted to i could probably just order for uh my family and, and get myself nothing and then just eat their scraps and probably be full to be honest yeah, because they won't eat <laughs> eat their leftovers, yeah. right? They'll be like, "I'll just have a glass of water, please." Right. The other thing that comes to mind when we're talking about things that are still a decent value is, I think the value resorts well, price wise, depending on the timing. Well, the all stars, I'll put it that way, because Pop Century, I think, has gone up too much just because of the Skyliner, but Coronado. I think it's a good value for what it is. Yeah. When you compare it to all the other places that are on the Skyliner, obviously. Yeah. In general, Coronado is a good value. And All-Stars, if you don't use the bus system, and keep harping on that because the bus to the values is atrocious, the bus service. So if you drive your own vehicle or have a rental car, it's a good value. You know, another thing Disney is kind of battling versus what Universal has is a lot of Disney's hotels are older. Yeah. Universal's is, you know, they've been built. Oh, there's like several of them have been built in the last decade or so. And Disney's only doing DVC hotels at this point. I mean, the last was part of animation, the last resort that didn't have DVC. Probably. And that was 2012, right? Something like that. 2011, it 12. Opened, it might have been, yeah. Art of Animation. And they were just picking up a, a project that was dropped pretty much and changed it. Well, I guess technically Grand Destino was not DVC, and that was 2019. But that was, that was an, an addition. That's an addition. Yeah, that's an addition to an existing resort. Right. But it was... Now, they have Riviera, but it's DVC. It's to launch right. And now everything they've done really is adding to DVC resorts or right, a new DVC, DVC resort, someplace, right? Which reflection or whatever it may be changed to is under construction, and this is going to be another DVC resort, right? Mm-hmm. But the parking, as we've talked about, that's something that they gave back to guests, unless you count the increase in the rooms, <laughs> right? Which <laughs> it's all in how you look at it. From a certain yeah. point of view. It's, it, it's just a hidden charge now is all it is. It's like the thing that I don't understand. Used to be restaurants all the time. Like the, the fee for, and I know it's changed a little bit, but the fee for like using a card or whatever was just part of the overhead, right? Like you never even knew that you were in, you never knew that there was a, a charge or a fee in with it for that sort of thing, so to speak. Yeah. Now they separate it, which boggles the mind. But people don't, care you know, if they're going to pay with one they're going to I guess but right it, it's just weird as why they feel like it's necessary to do that yeah but it is if you you know the free parking for resort guests at the parks is also a good value still not having to pay every time you drive your own vehicle because it is a lot faster to get around 
not taking their buses. Yeah. It's a lot less hassle. It is nice to take advantage of the free parking at the theme parks and not have to pay for parking after you leave when you uh, are at a resort. Because a lot of other hotels in Orlando area, in the Disney area, they charge for parking or resort fees or things like that. Swan Dolphin charges for parking. The uh, Hiltons in the area, Disney Springs area, charge for parking every day. Uh, like I say, once again, let me give you like a, talking about the price thing, let me give you a perspective. This is another Universal versus Disney thing, right? So I have a couple that I know that have recently done both. And uh, when they went to Disney and they stayed at French Quarter, mm-hmm. the rate per night was more yeah. than the Aventura stay at that Universal. they had at Universal was more per night. And oh. French Quarter was a smaller, seemingly outdated uh, room versus like upgrading modern now. conveniences like Aventura. Huh? French Quarter is getting the uh, refurb now. Yeah, they get a refurb. There's only so much they can do about the size, though. It's just like they do with the values. They they've tried to make better use of the space, which they have. Explore the space, which I will say. Yeah, I would have never say value sized room before they did that, and now that they've done that, I like the value rooms. Right. Well, what I was going to say is they they didn't they couldn't change the size of them, so they just made better use of the yeah, space, which was a good idea, at least. We've made the comment on here before about how that time I stayed the first time I ever stayed at Pop Century, we tripped over the luggage. Yes, or the door wouldn't open for the luggage. You, we could barely get the stroller out of the room because if you're in the bathroom and somebody uh, yes. opens the door, your knees are knocked off. I mean, yes. I remember yeah, back in that close. time, this was circa 2008, I think, but I remember back in that time period, literally measuring, like, like a, or I say measuring, well, like I would open the door versus, or like to where the toilet is, and they, they literally only left the just covenant. enough space. Yeah. They literally only left enough space for it to clear. Right. I mean, like they got as close as they could possibly get to the edge of that toilet right. seat. It's like the without angel wings it. on the Ark of the Covenant. They're closest they can be without touching. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, so, when they made the changes, I don't think it's like that anymore because they don't have a swinging door for one thing. Right. Yeah. Pocket doors. Very smart idea. And yeah. uh, most of those rooms have a, some sort of like a barn door, pocket door type thing to close right. off the bathroom area, the sink area to the rest of the room instead of a curtain, which is what it was at uh, the mermaid rooms back when we stayed in them. So, yeah. yeah, they've improved dramatically. And, you know, the way we do Disney, a lot of times when we're there, we're barely in the room. So a tiny room doesn't really bother me too much when we're basically there to sleep, and that's it. And then the rest of the day we're out, so... When it's that kind of trip, where we're in the parks most of the day or out and about, right? I don't mind the values at all. I think it's great. But if it's one where we want to take it a little slower, then I'd rather be other a, than you know, the proximity to the park, right? Or deluxe or something. Yeah, but I mean, if you're driving your own vehicle, it's like everything's ten minutes or less away anyway, just about. So it's not that bad. The other thing I was going to mention too is. For those days when you don't have a park day or something like that, it is free to kind of roam around the resorts. Obviously, you can't use the pools at the resorts that you're not staying at, but people still do that, by the way. But for the most part, you can't get away with it at the more popular ones. But Well, I was going to say, you can get away with it one that nobody wants to go to. Yeah, right. I think Jason was saying he noticed people... Like skylinering from like Pop over to Caribbean Beach, for example, use the pool there. Yeah, but I think they cracked down on Caribbean Beach because it's one of the better pools along the Skyliner. Probably. But yeah, because I know with Storm Along Bay, they give you wristbands when you walk into the pool. So you have to like. Yeah. You have to. I think all the deluxes have something. Yeah, they're they're getting more strict on that. 
They better do it like it say Saratoga because nobody's going to just make that trek out there just right. for the pool. Right. Why so, would they? Yeah. But my my point was going to be to visit the resorts and, you know, eat at the restaurants or whatever. You can wander around. And, of course, during the holidays, they've got decor and it's nice things to look at. And it's not just Christmas or Halloween. It's actually, do they do Halloween? Anyway, Easter is a big one. So yeah, there's plenty to see and do. And of course, Disney Springs. But yeah, pretty much the only place that does Halloween is Magic Kingdom. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, no one really decorates the resorts, so really. Just Christmas, really. A lot of resorts. Although we have spotted things. a decoration at Animal Kingdom. There was like a a, a jack-o'-lantern that was a, from a, had water flowing from it. It was basically a fountain. So is that a jack o' lantern vomiting? Like I, I don't know. I can't remember exactly what what section of the park it was in though either. Hmm. So there are like decorations, but there's not a lot of Halloween at the resorts. Is there? Maybe a little, but not not nothing like Christmas, obviously. I think the only place you're gonna find people really decorating for Halloween is maybe at the campground. Yeah, for wilderness. Well, the other thing too. These, these are very minor things, but. You can watch fireworks without having to go inside Magic Kingdom if you're just near it. It depends on where you are. Yeah. I mean, you can get in to some of the resorts. It's harder to without yeah. a dining reservation, but there's ways to do it, obviously. You can take a bus and stop it. If you're at Polynesia, you can, everybody can gather into that one little space yeah. right beside the pool where you can still see. <laughs> right. And the it's one not spot a, it doesn't beach, have a bungalow. You know. Right. In the way. And they basically destroyed the other, the pri- the quiet beach that you could have seen right. everything from. Possibly. With the new DVC tower. But So now you have to be spending thousands of dollars a night to get a view of the fireworks. Well, right? which is what they want, right? Nothing's for free, but. <laughs> Not anymore. Right. So I'm trying to think. There's some food items that are good. Like even the festival food at Epcot, there's some that are reasonably priced that are shareable even. I mean, they're not. you're not going to get huge portions out of it, obviously. I would never buy the drinks, though, at the festival booth because that's definitely, you're getting a thimble full of something for like $12 or $15. It's like, that's not worth it. But the food can be. I'm interested in Festival of the Holidays this year to see Again, I think it's been a while since I've done Festival of the Holidays, so. Well, our rescheduled trip is for right around the time that Arch begins. Ah, Farts. So, yeah, Festival of the Arch. Jason's favorite one now, that's what yes. he says. Which I like Festival of the Arts, too. Back to the popcorn. At Canada, you can get the maple popcorn for the same 225 or 220 whatever it is. Uh-huh. So you can get a different flavor. And there's another place that has different flavored popcorn. Why am I blanking on where that is? A refill. But anyway, the Canada one, we always stop there because you can get, a little, you know, instead of just butter popcorn, you can get the maple popcorn. Get a little different right. flavor. Same price. I would say, uh, when you're talking about things that were a decent value, I don't, I can't, I'm not sure what the price is now. I didn't look it up, but. I would say the fish and chips are a good, pretty good value, right? I mean, yeah. Uh, what is there to now? Yorkshire. Because they're pretty big pieces of cod. That you get. Yes, exactly. And the fi- and the fries or chips are are good. Thirteen forty nine. So I said terrible. It's gone up a little. But yeah, thirteen forty nine is still not bad. But the size you get and it has the chips with it, the fries. But you can get, so talking about baseline earlier, same price now, you can get 20 ounce draft beer at, for twelve twenty five at that as well. So again, not, it's not bad. It could, you know, could be worse. The fish and chips in the restaurant, by the way, is $31. And I don't think you get a whole lot more. It was a pretty good piece, uh, pretty big size, uh, whatever yeah. we... Got it back in the day, but I haven't, I haven't ate a but is the it restaurant for du- more than double the price worth it, like that much more. I don't think you get double the portion necessarily. It was a good size, but uh, 
I don't know. I'd be curious to order both and see if it's double the size. Because I have a hard time believing it's double the size. You're just paying for the inside the restaurant versus outside. Now, correct, correct me if I'm wrong. That time that you and I dined at the Rosen Crown, yeah, like 15 years ago now. Yeah. Did the shepherd's pie have actual lamb in it? No, it has grown beef. Oh, really? Because it had lamb in it. I thought it did too. But this says it has grown beef. Hmm. I wonder if they changed the. It's I thought like the traditional shepherd's, shepherd's pie actually did have lamb in it. Hmm. So I don't know. Interesting. Well, anyway. So moving on to. You know, we've talked about some things that are still still good value, but to pivot against that a little bit. Have it? Well, one other thing I was going to say is the annual pass, even though they just went up on price for um, most of them. Isn't that what they always do? Which, yeah, it goes up like 100 bucks a year, year it seems like almost, or something like that, or every couple of years. If you go enough... It is still a good value when you look at how much a day ticket costs. I don't know. I mean, it's still one of those if you go like 10 days a year, it still pays for itself. If you go more than that, Maybe. you're like, you know, getting it, less and it less. Always, every day. Like I say, it's always one of those things that uh, once you get it, you feel obligated. So the question is, would you have gone as much if you didn't get it? Yeah. I think that's, yeah, if you, if you did go that much which I try to do or I like to do still to warrant it not not because of it because I actually want to it's worth it at that point it's still a good value and you know again I don't think the merch discount and all that is is that great of a thing but it does save some so right but would I have bought all that stuff if I didn't have the discount I don't know do I buy more because I get a discount? No, nah, not really. Some people uh, probably do, though. End up spending more. But I will say when it comes to the AP, it was nice. Like if you did the shopping in the app, right, and you checked out, uh, you did the mobile checkout, uh-huh. how, uh, yeah, it, it gives automatically you factored it. automatically yeah. factored all that in. That's pretty That's nice. Kind of yeah. Like it knows... The AP discounts on rooms, I think next year, in particular 2025, is going to be excellent, which it's already pretty good this year. I got All-Stars for 150 on Thanksgiving week, so... To me, that's in itself is sad. That I mean, think about it. sub-100. That you're, you're getting 150, and you're saying it's a good discount, a good AP discount. That's true. it's 150. Yeah. But I it's mean, a holiday week, so you would think the. I wish there were AP discounts on the uh, Lightning Lane multi pass, but. No, anyway. that's never going to have a discount. Yeah, of course. But anyway, so what are a few things, if there's any, that are worth the splurge in Disney? Worth the splurge? Yeah. It depends really on what you're doing. I got to be honest, I find it hard to believe that most of the restaurants are worth the splurge or worth it. I don't just don't see it. And even now, I mean, even though the food was good when we did it back in 2019, just for the price point that it is now, I find it hard to say that even something like Cinderella's Roll Table is worth what it has. Yeah, so, that one's a little much. I, I think it's worth it in the sense that maybe if you want to do it once, maybe, maybe and you really want to experience it, it's worth it, but there's se- there's several that are just totally overrated. Yeah, and I think some of it's starting to show. Like for instance, uh, be our guest has been overrated for yes. quite some time now. That one used to actually be one I would consider a good value, but they completely ruined that. Yeah, with your was it sixty two or five dollar lunch. But the thing is, they, I'm sure they still get a good bit of people that go there. And, you know, yeah. it's, the, it's become the Bob Iger. I feel like sometimes his name is Donald Gennaro. <laughs> Coupon we can day. price this anything we want and people will pay it. Oh, right. That's exactly how they're treating their loyalists. Yeah. Well. Currently. Yeah, they know. So, and they keep paying it, so. Where's the breaking point? Right. I got a feeling it could show a little bit in 2025. I'm, I'm just saying there's a we'll significant see. number of people who are excited about there being a, a new 
theme park and it's not Disney that's yeah, doing yeah. it. There's a lot of anticipation for Epic Universe. I'm not predicting anything by any means, but I wouldn't be shocked if we didn't, when the smoke clears, see Magic Kingdom get dethroned uh, oh, you mean in attendance. Attendance by yeah. Epic Universe? Possibly. Well, it wouldn't happen next year because it's opening mid year, but 2020. Well, maybe 2026 um, by then, but. And that's the year when some of the stuff that Disney's doing is supposed to first open. Right. Supposed to, but then again, we're also supposed to have, as he put it, shovels in the ground, which I haven't seen a shovel yet. Yeah. He, you know, this was August when he said there's already shovels in the ground. Right. I was like, uh, there's already earth moving. And uh, I, what earth is it he's talking about exactly? Because I haven't seen any earth move that I, that I know of. Yeah. Turning the, I I don't think this new cake bake shop is worth the price, but there are still places like I think Space Two Twenty California Grill are well, still well Space Two Twenty for now, but it's gonna it, it, unfortunately if we go by the uh, the recent history, it's gonna suffer the fate of just be our guests. To be it honest, might, yeah. If they keep raising the price on that, maybe yeah. But I think so. Back to the annual pass thing, too. I was looking at, uh, so for the week, that Thanksgiving week, a single-day ticket for, oh, it says, uh, this is for next year. So the most expensive single-day ticket for next year at Magic Kingdom, Thanksgiving week, is $199 a day per person, of course. It says that's the more expensive than any day of 2024. So two hundred twelve dollars with tax is the most expensive Magic Kingdom ticket. Well, for next year. Well, if it's a single day, that is. Yeah, single day ticket. Yeah, now if you buy the you know multi day, the price will drop a little. Right per day, but and of course the part and then, then on top of that, this is the thing that's get. I wonder how many single day tickets they sell because over two hundred dollars just to get in yeah then you have uh the multi-pass or whatever yeah multi-pass or yeah or I, I wonder what the maximum amount you could spend on just tickets in one day is so i bet it's all up there if if it's 212 with tax i forgot what the price of the so if you got 212 or let's just say 199 pre-tax Plus the four forty nine for the uh, that's about six hundred fifty dollars for one are you talking about day if, per person. What do you, you what do you include that if, if you, you bought a day ticket and the well I guess you'd have to be at a deluxe so it'd probably be a package say, at that point. Right. Or, or could just you one night at a deluxe? I guess you could. Yeah, that's what I wonder. But anyway. So that's either way, uh, that's going to be over a thousand dollars to just go to a park for one day. For one day, yeah, yeah, and ride everything once. Well, let's just say you got regular. Let's just say you're one person, right? You've got the two hundred dollar two. Let's just say two hundred thirty dollars, just yeah. for the sake of. And then you've got. Who's going to do that? Light LA multi experience, which yeah. could be, so let's just say twenty bucks. Yeah. Right. On top of that, so you're talking two fifty there. Then you're by each of the individuals, which we'll just say those are also twenty just to keep it easy, so it's another forty bucks. You're still talking about right at three hundred dollars or so for one day uh and skip the line excess. Eh. For one person. Yeah. So yeah. At least. Yeah. It's it is getting and you know, okay. if they had announced this uh, this new, uh, what's it called again? Uh, what's the? Premier Pass? The, yeah, Premier Pass. That's what mm-hmm. it was. I don't know why I couldn't think of it. Uh, okay, so you, you have this one price, right? And you get to skip each ride once with this thing. Yeah. If they had had that and it replaced Lightning Lane and Individual Lightning Lane, that would actually help standby. But doing it this way, I feel like standby is going to be even longer. Yeah, I think standby would possibly would suffer. Yeah, possibly. Mm-hmm. 
And for four forty nine for the premiere thing, if you were the average guest, I don't think you can get through every ride at Magic Kingdom in a day. Even with the you know, Oh, you most definitely could. I'm just saying like the average guest. I think even the average guest could because you know again well they're gonna go to the very front of the line. I mean you could, but would they want to? I guess that's my thing. Like you'd want to do the Tron and you know right. uh, Mind Train and Peter Pan and Kiana's things like that, but then are you gonna wanna do Speedway and Teacups and Barnstormer just to say I did them with without having to go through the regular line? Yeah. You know? Like I don't know. Speaking of Tiana's, uh, the previews for uh, Disneyland Disneyland. version was this week. I got to tell you, so far not much has improved. (laughs) The very first day they had these, they spent almost, they had an almost two hour downtime. Yeah. uh, After the. I saw too, like water wasn't even pouring over the. Well, it was that way in Magic Kingdom too, to start with. Well, it was low. low. Like it was a slower, it wasn't, it was. But the the ones, some videos I saw, it was like no water at all. Yeah. Pour and over. But from what I've seen, though, the biggest difference between the two is the Disneyland seems to go faster, is what I've heard, than Disney World. Uh, it just looks like it, I think. I don't Maybe. know. I think they it both seem pretty like quick. They both go pretty quick compared to their predecessor. Yeah, they're definitely cut the ride time down a little bit. Which is interesting. Um, I do. There's some parts where I wish it was slower, like the end scene. I wish it would slow down for that. But right, I like the pacing in the beginning part. Honestly, uh, I think it's good to be a little bit faster. Well, I feel like in general, like I, they made this comment that there's not as much slowdown. I think that the system that they have in place with the like the timing. For the show scenes, like they have sensors and stuff, maybe that yeah. factors in. I don't know, maybe. but it, it seems like there's not things like you don't have like log jams like you used to would get with Splash. Maybe. Yeah, perhaps. Well, say like with Splash, like you had a potential of having one right before the first drop, right? And it would stop. Most of the rides you see on Tiana's doesn't, it doesn't even halls right there at the top of that it just keeps going okay. uh, and when you get to the big drop you don't usually see there's a possibility of getting a pause there but it's usually not for very long once upon a time you could actually stack up right there at that point which I think is where they're probably saving a, a good bit of the time and the difference between the two and even at the end the very end like after the, sh- the showboat scene you know, when it was splashed Getting there to the uh, the load and unload, it seems like the logs would uh, back up there a little bit, right? But yeah, you don't really see that with Tiana's when it's functioning. Uh, they're still still having issues with that. Uh, I really think that they planned on being standby by now, and they still haven't. So yeah, who knows how long it's going to be now? Yeah, I think by I mean the way they worded it, it would have been already in Disney World, but. They've obviously had a few issues. Well, yeah, but what I'm saying is the crew that responsible for opening it, right? They shipped them to California to do the California one, and it didn't seem to improve much because it has downtime. I guess we'll see just how much, if in the near future, it, is this going to be a test track situation where it hardly ever, like it just never improves? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, hopefully, if test track improved, it was very marginally. It was marginal at best. Right. I mean, I think it's gotten better. We should look at the stats and see uh, has it improved. Uh, We should look at that, but we don't have time for this episode to do it. Gotcha. But, yeah, prices are going up. I think Disney seems to do this in waves where they just throw all the big price things at once to so that everybody forgets about it. They're probably doing it more frequently than at any point in time in history. But they're already, like we've said before, well ahead of inflation. So, yeah. And if they just continue to do it, like I said, there's, as everybody has always said, though, 
surely there's got to be a tipping point or a breaking point, but so far they haven't met it, it seems. So, yeah, they've been able to increase every year. Well, we'll see how Epic Universe impacts us this year. It'll be very interesting to see how the pricing goes. I still think this summer is going to be the best price you're going to well, find. Well, it might on. be a good time to go. I mean, you know. But yeah. again, the reason why it's a good time to go is because, not because of what Disney wants. Disney would rather have more people there. Right. Uh, or at least they'd rather have, you know, they want their spending per guest. You know, it's funny to me, all this stuff that people blamed on Chapek and saying Chapek doing the obvious stuff is nothing, none of it's really stopped. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, like I said, I've made the comment before, what did Iger do? Free parking when he came back. Everything else is still in place and has really only exacerbated uh, on top yeah. of that. So you can't blame that on Bob Chapek, folks. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah, they've pretty much kept all that in place. Right. Although he he implemented it. But. I was going to say, he did the dirty deed, and then they was like, oh, you've got all this in place? See you. Yeah. So, yeah. The last uh, price hike that I wanted to throw in here was about the regular Lightning Lane multipass. It's for the next upcoming week. We're getting into the holiday season, so uh, we're seeing $35 at Magic Kingdom for the um, 35 Well, that is, that is high, but Genie Plus, the highest price was 39 so we're not quite there yet, but we're also not at the right. uh, Christmas Thanksgiving yet, so Will we hit 40, 45, 50 by the end of the year? Possibly. We'll see. I don't know if it'll hit 50, but chances are it'll at least hit 40, right? Or surpass the Genie Plus pricing. You would think. Perhaps. So I'll have to contend with that if I go. The room was cheaper, but paying for multipass is going to be 40 bucks. Yeah. Boo. Anyway. Um, okay, so we should wrap up there for uh, this week. So we're uh, happy Halloween and where can we be found? Well, there is always Facebook, there is X, there is Instagram. Uh, that is all at TWTM Podcasts. We have a Spreadshirt store in which you can get your exclusive TWTM merchandise. That is shop.spreadshirt.com slash TWTM podcast. And we have a YouTube channel as well. Where can you find that, Adam? On our website, travelingwiththemouse.com. And you can email us podcast at travelingwiththemouse.com. So for John, this is Indy. I mean, Adam. And we uh, hope you will join us on our next trip. We named the dog Indiana. Got a lot of fond memories of that dog. Like, the dog?